Look at how massive this pine cone is. It's bigger than my face. Our names are Mike and Heather. We're traveling the US in our van Appa on a mission to visit all 50 states. Subscribe and join us as we try to figure out this whole van life thing. As always, thanks for watching. Hello from just about the exit of Yosemite. The past couple of days, we've been exploring Yosemite National Park, hiking, seeing all the cool sites like El Capitan, Half Dome, and Bridal Veil Falls even Yosemite Falls, which we hiked all the way to the top of. So we got our last glimpse as we were driving out and we are leaving officially now to head to Sequoia National Park, which is about a two and a half hour drive below Yosemite National Park. And now that we have officially exited the park, we are onwards to Sequoia. We are heading south along the different highways from Yosemite to Sequoia National Park. And we have stopped to do some laundry because we are just about out of clean clothes. You ready? In addition to getting laundry done, which was absolutely needed, we also were able to make a stop at Walmart, which ended up being in the same plaza. So we were able to get some supplies and some groceries. So we are very excited to be all geared up again and ready to hit the road towards Sequoia National Park. To save space and make everything fit a little bit easier, we always take everything out of the boxes and then put it in some sort of bag so that way it's a lot more <laughs> moldable and easier to shove into places. We also got a lot more baby wipes. Now that we got things mostly organized in the back, minus the laundry, we still have to pack those into our cubes because it's just a big pile back there. We are headed to a boondocking site just outside of Sequoia National Park. It's supposed to overlook a lake, at least according to I.O. Orlander. So fingers crossed, it's as beautiful as it's described in the app. I was able to get some work done in the parking lot waiting for laundry. And I think at the boondocking site, we're just gonna get a little bit more work done and prepare for tomorrow where we'll finally enter the park. Wake up, the world is smiling. Got the sun on my side today. Nothing can stop me shining. Feeling lucky in a big way. Soaking up every moment. Throw a cherry on your Sunday. Hands in the sky wide open. Yeah, I just want to celebrate. So we've had a slight change of plans. The lake boon docking spot was already actually taken by some people and it was beautiful just driving past the lake with the sun gleaming on it. It forced us to go a little bit further down on the I Overlander map to this trailhead, but I'm not mad about it because on the way here, we actually got to see a bear. As we were driving along the road, we saw a black bear, which in this case was brown, and we ended up seeing it find some dead animal <laughs> that it just decided to start eating. So that was kind of really neat to see. And from the car, we did not yes. get out. <laughs> yep, safely from the car. So I think we are going to get set up for the evening. We're gonna try and get into Sequoia fairly early tomorrow so that we can make our way through and see all that there is to see. I feel like I've really been enjoying the national parks that we've been able to go through on this trip. So I can't wait to see Sequoia. Before we can actually relax back here, we have some organization to do. We have to put away all of our clothes and um, you know, just, just tidy up a bit. It's a little bit of a mess, especially because I like dove into the back to try to find the zoom lens. So the back of our van looks like this. <laughs> oh man. Life is better on the bright side. Oh, you just threw, I guess. Huh, okay. <laughs> well, I guess that is the benefit of having the America the Beautiful Pass was we kind of just got waved through. Good morning from Sequoia National Park. We were up bright and early to get into the park because it is the weekend and we wanted to try and see as much as we could today without huge amounts of crowds. So we are at our first stop, which is Hospital Rock. It's a really amazing stop that a lot of people are honestly just driving by at this time, so we kind of have it all to ourselves. You can actually see old paintings and markings and drawings from the Native Americans who lived here. There's also a little waterfall just around the corner from Hospital Rock that we're gonna go check out, and then we're gonna move on to the big trees. Suddenly I'm seeing everything so different. Like I'm looking at the world through a brand new lens Every shade of green and blue And it's all because of you I'm seeing everything So 
we are leaving the Hospital Rock area. It's actually a little picnic area as well. And now we are heading to the Giant Tree Grove. There you can see some of the world's biggest sequoia trees. So I'm very excited about that. We have a little bit of a drive until we get there. So we're just gonna take in all the beautiful hills. The way that the sun is shining through right now is really something amazing as well. So we are not quite yet at the Big Tree Grove. We stopped just before it at a museum and visitor center, hoping that we can get our passport stamped before we get into, I think, what's going to be the heaviest trafficked area because of General Sherman, which is the world's largest tree. So we're gonna stop in at the museum, maybe learn a little bit more about this area, <laughs> get our passport stamped, and then head to the big trees. But we're catching our first glimpses of them now, just being surrounded by them here and blown away <laughs> yeah i it's tough to put into words just how big these trees are and just how grand they are when you see them really really unlike anything i think we've seen <laughs> not the best about two miles away from that visitor center that we just got our passport stamped at we are now on the general sherman tree loop it's about 0.7 miles down to see the giant tree and that's where we're headed now. We are so excited to be here going to see the world's largest tree. The biggest tree on earth is just a little bit down this trail from us. That is pretty impressive. <laughs> wow. It just is like really unbelievable I think just to see how big it is down here and then how high up it goes. And that's even without the top. The top of the tree is actually dead so it can't grow height wise anymore but it does keep growing more and more round which is still deeming it the world's largest tree because of the sheer volume of it. So it's growing wider and wider not necessarily taller and taller. Very very much impressive when you think of like how big it is. There was even a sign that showed how big like the biggest branch was. It was over six and a half feet, which is taller than Mike. So that's just a branch is the size of Mike, well, width wise. We are on the Congress Trail, not too far where the General Sherman tree stands. This is a lot less crowded and you're just surrounded by the beautiful trees all around. It's a really nice kind of peaceful quiet hike. It's been really cool to not only see all the wildlife like the little chipmunks but even the down trees to see all of the rings around it. That's one of my favorite things especially going to museums where they have like the chronological dates listed on the tree because a lot of them are over 2,000 years old in this forest including General Sherman so just to know that they've been here long before us and are going to be there long after is just very surreal and kind of humbling. <laughs> right now we're heading over to the McKinley tree which we don't really know anything about but it was on the trail and we thought that sounds pretty nice and we're enjoying the walk so we're gonna go check out the McKinley tree. I couldn't tell you where this road will lead But this is alive as we will ever be Cause we will never be this young again You're definitely gonna have a duck. <laughs> Just a little bit too short for me, but that's pretty amazing. So this is a fallen tree that they've cut through the trunk that you can walk through. Heather, you're what, five, six? On a good day. On a good day. And she was able to walk through without crouching. I'm a little bit taller so I had to duck but that's pretty amazing. So we've made it to the McKinley tree. That's pretty cool. It's just weird to see these trees in perspective with some of the other trees where we would consider big trees that are just dwarfed in size by the sequoias. Now that we've made it to the McKinley tree, we are headed back to our van to explore more of Sequoia National Park. But as we're walking along this path here, we're seeing a lot of fire damaged trees. And something that I found really interesting was that the sequoias actually need fire to be able to reproduce and their bark kind of acts as an insulation to protect itself against fire. So they are very fire resistant and actually need fire. Because it helps kind of activate the seed pods that the sequoias can then drop and populate the area that's now been cleared by fire. So decreased competition allows them to grow with better sunlight and soil without having to worry about other plants that maybe aren't as good at fighting against the fire. But it is kind of interesting or cool to think that we think a fire is destructive, but it is a necessary cycle here in this type of forest. So nature's pretty cool <laughs> and kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
we are turning around so there were a mom and at least one cub there may have been two um, cubs back there black bears but that's three bears in three days so we are walking back up the trail that we were just coming down we, even though that was the closest way to general sherman but uh gotta give mama bear and her cub space because we don't want to be on the news later even though we're in the park they are wild animals and especially a mom and cub that's just something that you want to give space to. We made it back to our van after having to take the longer path back to General Sherman and then up to the parking lot, but it was well worth it to give the bears their space. Just to be able to see the bears was really cool, but definitely wanted to take the long way. But now we got the AC cranking, the Gatorade going, because it hits quite a bit of an uphill from General Sherman. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I'm still just feeling that hike the other day that we did in Yosemite. Now we're going to keep going along the Grant Highway. Hopefully my face fades to a normal color before we get out and enjoy the next spot. This is where we came in today and we worked our way all the way up to Hospital Rock and then we continued up to here. That's where we got our passport stamped. And then two miles up, we stopped at the General Sherman tree and now we're continuing up this drive all the way up. We have pulled off here at the Halstead Meadow picnic area along Grant's Highway. There's a fly buzzing around now. We saw the meadow as we were driving along the highway and it looked really pretty so we thought this would be a great spot to have lunch. There's also the road traffic from the, the road. Heather is making sandwiches and then there are some picnic tables just down off the road that we're going to hike down to where we're going to eat our lunch. And once we finish that, we're going to get back on the road and drive the rest of Sequoia National Park. We're actually going to be heading into Kings Canyon National Park in just a moment here after we finish our sandwiches, of course. Sequoia National Park was actually established first, and once awareness grew of needing to preserve this land, the Kings Canyon National Park was established. It's really cool to see that because it was so popular and because of the importance of preserving these parks that it keeps on expanding. But that's where we're heading to next. So we're gonna get two new passport stamps for our passport here today. We pulled off briefly at the Kings Canyon Overlook and are getting our first glimpses into Kings Canyon where we're going to be headed into right now. We have made our way all the way to the Kings Canyon Visitor Center and Grant Grove Village where we were able to get our passport stamped and we're going to make a short walk over to the General Grant Tree. What's really cool is the General Grant Tree is second to the General Sherman Tree that we just saw in size. So it is the second largest sequoia in the world and it is the largest sequoia here in Kings Canyon National Park because technically we're in a, a different national park. So it still has the title of being the largest at least for this particular national park. This one is actually wider at its base, but I don't think based on volume, it's bigger. So this one should still be very impressive when we get to it. So let's go. We're actually taking a slightly different path than I think what most people do. We are leaving from the Grant Visitor Center and taking the Grant Tree Trail from there. And I think this trail is about a mile, so it should be a nice walk through the forest. It also was the one that had parking, if we're being honest. Yeah, we didn't bother to drive down to the next one. We just figured we'll walk from here and see how it goes. <laughs> Look at how massive this pine cone is. It's bigger than my face. How cool is that? And they're everywhere. You're not supposed to take things from the national park system, but I would totally take a giant pine cone if I could. Look how giant this one is. They're everywhere. It's so perfect. That is pretty cool. Why are things so much better when they're either really, really big or really tiny? <laughs> back to nature. So those really large pine cones that we just saw a little bit back up the trail aren't from the sequoia trees, which is interesting because of how big they are. You would think that they would be with the big trees, but that's not the case. The sequoia seeds, as we've been reading, are actually pretty tiny, so. I think there's probably a metaphor in there somewhere. Obviously there's some trees down, but there's bark all along here from the trees. And just 
looking at how thick the bark is on some of these trees, which I guess is really helpful for fire insulation, but man, that's neat. And a lot of them will be just cut along the pathway on either side, but this one is pretty cool because I don't know if you can tell, it's almost the same height as Heather. Width-wise. Width-wise, the, the actual trunk, and it goes all the way out to there. I don't think that this is a sequoia. Actually, maybe, I think this one is. I think this one came from this trunk just over here. So another massive sequoia. They're so huge here in the park. Shortly after that fallen tree, we have made it to the parking area that we probably should have done because that definitely felt longer than a mile in this heat. But uh, we're here and we're about ready to see the tree. <laughs> General Grant is what they call the centennial stump and we've been saying over and over again how unbelievable that these big trees were and to some they were. In 1876 they actually cut down one of these trees to bring it and show it off to people that proved trees did exist this big and it was actually labeled the California hoax because even though they shipped the trees to Philadelphia they still didn't believe that the trees were real even though they were seeing them with their own eyes which is a little bit how I feel right now. Coming from the east side of the country and seeing this over here in California I think it just it defies reason that there are trees this big here in the United States. Or honestly in the world. <laughs> Those sequoia seed pods. I'm pretty sure this is them. So from these come those giant trees. So we have finished up the Grant Tree Trail loop, which is back that way. There's a parking lot right there, so don't make the same mistake as us. In hindsight, we probably would have uh, driven down the little bit to the parking lot and walked in from there. Now we've got a little bit of a trek back. It's definitely heating up, but it's not too bad. At least we get pretty trees to look at. Yeah. There, it is mostly in the shade and you get some killer views. We're on the uphill now though, so we're breathing heavy. Yeah, yeah we are pretty high up, so definitely huffing and puffing as we make our way back towards Appa, but this has been a lot of fun. I really, really liked these two, not twin parks, I wouldn't say, um, but these two connected national parks. I think that was really cool. We're just now passing the turnoff for where you would go to see the General Grant tree. So it's about a tenth of a mile down, you make the turn and then go right down into the parking lot and save yourself about a mile worth of walking. It was very close to the visitor center and uh, we should have just drove there. <laughs> But I can't be too mad about it because it was a really cool hiking path and it did allow us to get out into Kings Canyon and really explore it and feel like we've really seen a lot of it. That's going to be a wrap for our adventure here today in the Sequoia National Park as well as the Kings Canyon National Park. There's a lot of fun coming here and seeing the enormous trees. Definitely a must-do stop while we were in California and something we were really looking forward to. We are headed back towards the coast. We're jumping back on the Pacific Coast Highway as we continue to travel north along that. Our next stop there is going to be Big Sur, which is something that I think has been on our travel bucket list and is really near the top of the things we were looking forward to in California. So I can't wait to get back there and check it out. I think we're also gonna probably stop at a Planet Fitness because we got way more sweaty than we were really anticipating today. We're leaving Kings Canyon, going to Planet Fitness, and then Big Sur. So we'll see you on the coast.